Peter, was Agent Peter Strzok the former deputy head of counterintelligence at the FBI? I don't remember his exact title, but I believe that's correct. And he's the same Peter Strzok who was a key player in the Clinton investigation, the same Peter Strzok who interviewed Cheryl Mills, whom Abedin participated in the Clinton, uh, Secretary Clinton's interview. And he's also the same Peter Strzok who now we know changed Director Comey's exoneration letter, changed the term gross negligence, which is a crime, to extreme carelessness. Is that the same guy? Well, Congressman, I don't know every step that uh, the individual you mentioned was involved in, but certainly I know that he was heavily involved in the uh, Clinton and he, email investigation. Thank you. And, he, and is, it, it's, is this the same Peter Strzok who helped, uh, was a key player in the Russian investigation, and the same Peter Strzok who was put on Mueller's team, uh, Special Counsel Bob Mueller's team? I certainly know that he was working on the special counsel's investigation, whether or not he would be characterized as in a key same, player on that investigation, that's okay, really not the, for me to say. And the same Peter Strzok that we learned this past weekend was removed from the special counsel team because he exchanged text messages with a colleague at the FBI that were displayed a pro-Clinton bias. Is that accurate? Yes. Talk sir. about the same guy. Okay. Yes. Sir. Well, here's what I'm not getting. Peter Strzok is selected to be on Mueller's team. After all this history, put on Mueller's team, and then he's removed for some pro-Clinton text messages. I mean, there are all kinds of people on Mueller's team who are pro-Clinton. There's been all kinds of stories. PolitiFact reported 96% of the top lawyers' uh, uh, contributions went to Clinton or Obama. But Peter Strzok, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, interviewed Mills, Abedin, interviewed Secretary Clinton, changed gross negligence a crime to the term extreme carelessness, who ran the Russian investigation, who interviewed Mike Flynn, gets put on Mueller's team, and then he gets kicked off for a text message that's anti-Trump. If he kicked everybody off Mueller's team who was anti-Trump, I don't think there'd be anybody left. So here, here there's got to be something more here. It can't just be some text messages that show a pro-Clinton, anti-Trump bias. There's got to be something more. And I'm trying to figure out what it is. But my hunch is it has something to do with the dossier. Director, did Peter Strzok help produce and present the application to the FISA court to secure a warrant to spy on Americans associated with the Trump campaign? Congressman, I'm not prepared to discuss anything about uh, a FISA process in this. Not a, we're not talking about what happened in the court. We're talking about what the FBI took to the court, the application. Did Peter Strzok, was he involved in taking that to the court? Uh, I'm not going to discuss in this setting anything to do with the FISA court applications. Well, let's let's remember a couple things, Director. And I know you know this. We've, we've all been made aware of this in the last few weeks. Let's remember a couple things about the dossier. The Democrat National Committee in the Clinton campaign, which we now know we're one and the same, paid the law firm who paid Fusion GPS, who paid Christopher Steele, who then paid Russians to put together a report that we call a dossier full of all kinds of fake news, National Enquirer garbage. And it's been reported that this dossier was all dressed up by the FBI taken to the FISA court and presented as a legitimate intelligence document that it became the basis for granting a warrant to spy on Americans. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that actually took place. It sure looks like it did. And the easiest way to clear it up is for you guys to tell us what was in that application and who took it there. Congressman, our staffs have been having extensive interaction with both intelligence committees on our interaction with the FISA court, and I think that's the appropriate setting for those questions. Here's what I think, Director Ray. I think Peter Strzok, head of counterintelligence at the FBI, Peter Strzok, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, did all the interviews, Peter Strzok, the guy who was running the Russian investigation at the FBI, Peter Strzok, Mr. Super Agent at the FBI, I think he's the guy who took the application to the FISA court. And if that happened, I mean, think if this happened, if you had the FBI working with a campaign, the Democrats' campaign, taking opposition research, dressing it all up and turning it into an intelligence document and taking it to the FISA court so they could spy on the other campaign, if that happened, that is as wrong as it gets. And you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. You can clear it all up. 
You can clear it all up for all of us here, all the Congress who wants to know, and frankly, all of America who wants to know. You can clear it all up by release. We sent you a letter two days ago. Just release the application. Tell us what was in it. Tell us if I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. I think that's exactly what happened. And if it did, it is as wrong as it could be. And people who did that need to be held accountable. Congressman, we will not hesitate to hold people accountable after there has been an appropriate investigation, independent and objective, by the Inspector General into the handling of the prior matter. And based on that, I will look at all available remedies, depending on what the facts are when they are found. As to the access to the dossier, that's something that is a subject of ongoing discussion between my staff and the various intelligence committees. There's nothing prohibiting you, Director. Is there anything prohibiting you from showing this committee the what was presented to the FISA court. The, the application you all put together at the FBI that was presented to the FISA court. Is there anything preventing you from showing us that? The time the gentleman has expired, the director can respond. I, I do not believe that I can legally and appropriately share a FISA court submission with this committee. I'm talking about what the FBI put together, not what the court had, what, what you took there, what was the, the process put together, what you presented, what you took to the court. When, when I sign FISA applications, which I have to do almost every day of the week, they are all covered with a classified information cover. So that's part of why Director, we is it likely that Peter it Strzok, Is it likely that Peter Strzok played a gentleman, part in the application presented to the FISA court? The gentleman's time has expired. However, I do want to follow up on your last response to the gentleman. This committee, the House Judiciary Committee, has primary jurisdiction over the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. Uh, so any request for documents coming uh, to any part of the Congress should include the House Judiciary Committee. And if it uh, uh, is classified in any way, shape, or form, it can be provided to us uh, in a classified setting. But uh, that is information that we are very much interested in. Mr. Chairman. Very much want to receive. Do, question to you, the chairman. Yeah, I don't think there's anything prohibiting the FBI from giving us what they used to put together what was taken to the FISA court. That's what we're asking for. And there is nothing prohibiting him from doing that. I don't think there is either. Time of the gentleman has expired, however. You care to respond to that, Director Ray? No, I think I've covered it. Uh, okay, so do you think you will get the answer from the FBI about whether the dirty dossier was used as the means to get a warrant to then track the Trump administration? I'm convinced it was used. Um, they can prove me wrong. They can present the application. Nothing preventing them from doing so. We're the ju uh, Judiciary Committee. We have jurisdiction over the Justice Department. Show us what you took, not what the court has, what you took to the court that became the basis for securing warrants to spy on Americans associated with the Trump campaign. We need that information because each day, we just heard about Mr. Orr, we know about Peter Strzok, who we talked about in committee today. Each and every day, something new comes out which reinforces this belief that you had the FBI working with the Clinton campaign to go after the other party's nominee. That is not supposed to happen in this great country. It is not supposed to work that way. You had this dossier, which was, you know, Clinton campaign paying Fusion GPS, paying Christopher Steele, paying Russians for a bunch of baloney that they turn into an intelligence document, take to the court to get a warrant to spy on Americans? Really? And potentially Christopher Steele was also, it's been reported, paid by the FBI, the MI6 agent who collected the information. So all this goes on, and Peter Strzok gets dismissed from the Mueller team, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, ran the Russian investigation. It all starts to just point to this idea that the government was working with one major political party to go after the other party's nominee, and that is not fair to Mr. Trump. President Trump, that's not fair to, it's just not how it's supposed to work. My, my guess is his fingerprints are all over this application. He was the deputy head of counterintelligence at the FBI. I mean, he's probably one of the key guys involved in all the all the FISA applications that go to the to the FISA court. So um, I want to question him. We got Mr. Rosenstein coming next week. I think that's important. So um, there are lots of questions, but give us the documents. Prove us wrong. Okay. I don't think we're wrong. Think of Peter Strzok, the head of counterintelligence at the FBI, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, interviewed Huma Abedin, interviewed Cheryl Mills, interviewed Secretary Clinton. He's the guy who changed. He's the guy who changed the exoneration letter from Director Comey from gross negligence, which is a crime, to extreme carelessness. He made that change. He's the guy who interviewed Mike Flynn. He ran the Russian investigation, gets picked by Bob Mueller to go on his team, and then gets kicked off for a few text messages. 
Come on. Do you think it's, there's much more to that? It has to be more. If you kicked everyone off who was anti-Trump text messages on the Mueller camp, there wouldn't be anyone left on the Mueller team. People with common sense can look at all that's unfolded, all that we have learned in the last several weeks with Mr. Orr, with Mr. Strzok, with what we learned about the dossier and the fact that the Clinton campaign, the DNC paid for it. All this that we've learned and they say, wait a minute. I thought we were supposed to be investigating possible coordination between the Trump campaign and Russians to influence the election. Have you seen any? No, I haven't seen a bit, but we do know that the Clinton campaign paid Russians to do what? Influence the election. And so Americans are sharp people, common sense, and they're saying, wait, this doesn't add up. And each and every day we get more information which confirms something's wrong here, something smells bad here. Let's get the answers. And the best way to get the answers is for the FBI to give us that application we can Fortunately, the last two years have not been good years for the Bureau, and they have not been good years for the Department. We had an Attorney General meet with the spouse of a target of an investigation on the tarmac and asked that an investigation be called something other than an investigation, but be called a matter. We've had an Attorney General recuse himself from the largest, most significant investigation currently in his office. We had the director of the FBI appropriate a major charging decision away from the Department of Justice because he was concerned that the public wouldn't have confidence if the Department of Justice handled that decision themselves. We had an FBI director write two politically volatile letters weeks before an election. Uh, we had an FBI director memorialize conversations he had with the president of the United States because he didn't trust the president's recall of those conversations. And I think what frustrates some folks is when Director Comey wanted special counsel for President Trump, he leaked one of those memos. When he didn't have confidence in Loretta Lynch, we didn't hear a word about it. There were no leaks that prompted special counsel when he didn't trust Loretta Lynch. There were leaks when he decided he didn't trust President Trump. We've had an acting AG fired. We've had the director of the FBI fired. And we can't manage to find prosecutors who haven't donated to presidential candidates. Out of all the universe of prosecutors that you used to work with, and I used to work with, and Johnny Ratcliffe used to work with, we can't find a dozen that haven't donated to major political candidates. And now we have special agent struck. It was the inspector general, not the Department of Justice, not the Bureau who found these texts. It was the inspector general. And I share your confidence in his objectivity. I share it. But it shouldn't have been the inspector general that had to bring this to our attention 12 months after it happened. And that same agent is the one who reportedly interviewed Secretary Clinton in an interview that you and I have never seen conducted that way before. To have potential witnesses and potential targets sit in on a witness interview, I appreciate your professionalism and your unwillingness to want to say how unprecedented that is, so I'm not going to ask you. I'll just tell you, it's unprecedented. And that same agent is alleged to have been the one that changed the language. You're right, they are synonyms. Extremely careless is a synonym for grossly negligent, which begs the question, why change it? But you and I know why it was changed. It was changed because the statute says grossly negligent. And if you're not going to charge someone, God knows you don't want to track the statute with the language that you use. That would be stupid. What's also stupid is to do view the target. That memo was drafted before the last witness was interviewed. Director, it was drafted before the target of the investigation was even, was even interviewed which makes people wonder, was the decision made before the interviews were finished? And now we believe that that same agent is also involved in the investigation into President Trump and his campaign and may have interviewed Michael Flynn, that hasn't been confirmed, and we don't know what role, if any, he took in the preparation of documents for court filing. So I'm gonna say this because I'm out of time and I appreciate the chairman's patience with me. You have a really important job. 
When all else fails in this country, we want to be able to look to the FBI. We want to be able to look to the Department of Justice, who all the other institutions we trust, including Congress, appear to be broken. We want to be able to look to you. It's been a really bad two years. I am counting on you to help answer our questions in Congress, our fellow citizens' questions, but I am more than anything counting on you to go back to work for that blindfolded woman holding a set of scales that really doesn't give a whit about politics. That's the FBI that I want. I'm gentlemen, has expired.